creating a useful wedding gift registry full of things you need and will actually use for years to come, including your top registry wish list picks, things I registered for and literally never used, and so much more. It's all coming up next on the Wedding Planning Podcast. There is no place quite like Etsy for personalized wedding gifts and decor. Make your wedding celebration as unique as you with custom signs, invitations, favors, and more. Filter endless beautiful options by price point, color, free shipping, delivery date, and style. When you visit weddingplanningpodcast.co slash Etsy. That website again is weddingplanningpodcast.co slash E-T-S-Y. Enjoy the show. Why, hello there, my friend, and thank you so much for joining me today on the Wedding Planning Podcast to talk all things gift registry. The amazing news is that today with all a million creative gift registry options, you have endless opportunities to register for creative and fun lifestyle gifts that you actually need and that you will actually use in the years to come. Wedding registries have evolved a lot over the past decade or so. And thankfully, it's become much more mainstream to stray from the traditional pots and pans and towels and kitchen stuff. And couples are going ahead and registering for really super creative things that fit into your lifestyle. And again, that you need, you want, and you're actually going to use. So in today's show, we're going to walk through exactly how to determine what you want and need so that you can build a wedding gift registry that really, really works for you. We're going to cover all the bases in terms of the things that you love doing, things that you need for your new or maybe your existing home together, and even bigger ticket wish list items that a larger group of your guests can go ahead and contribute towards together as a group. The point today is for you to seize this once in a lifetime opportunity of having hundreds of your closest friends and family wanting to give you really nice and useful gifts so that your living room after the wedding day has come and gone doesn't look like Target and Amazon just exploded a bunch of random stuff. Remember and keep in mind throughout our conversation today, the whole point of your wedding gift registry is that people want to share nice gifts with you and they don't know exactly what you want and what you need unless you tell them. I will say before we just dive into the points that I want to cover today, I'm approaching this episode and every episode really as somewhat of a minimalist by nature. And I'm just a person who appreciates simplicity and typically less is more in my world. I don't like a lot of stuff lying around my house that I don't use regularly, and I will always choose quality over quantity. So I come at this from that angle, and I would caution you to just be careful with a really generic gift registry list because those lists are designed in kind of a cookie cutter way that doesn't really take into account Again, your lifestyle, the things you like to do, your hobbies, and it can quickly create just a mess pile of stuff that you don't truly need and you're not going to use. So our conversation today is going to give you some tips for doing some careful planning and just putting a lot of thought into creating your gift registry. So with that, let's dive into some registry tips. I will say before you head out to your favorite website or your favorite store and go crazy adding random stuff to your list, here are some guidelines for you and your partner to consider. And as I list off these items, you definitely do not need to be taking notes or worry about forgetting something. You can find a full recap of today's episode when you visit weddingplanningpodcast.co slash registry. And I'll throw a link to that in today's show notes as well. 
Traditionally, wedding gift registries are pretty heavy on items that you find within your home. So let's start there, the more traditional department of registering for gifts, and let's take a walk through your home. Now, of course, every couple's situation is going to be different. So regardless of whether you're currently living together in a home that you've shared for years or maybe you're moving in together after the wedding for the first time into a brand new place and living together again for the first time. So depending on which of those sounds like you, a gift registry checklist might be helpful in terms of getting you started. But again, I really, really encourage you to very thoughtfully go through the items and the areas of your home and ask yourselves if you really need X, Y, and Z. (laughs) Just because it's on the registry list does not mean that you will ever personally need or use it. And later on in the show, I am going to share some items of things that John and I registered for and we never used, just to kind of give you a big picture real life some examples. And then your kind of our next step is going to be to think about the things that you currently own. So you already have them, but maybe they could be replaced with a nicer or a newer version. Again, this is literally a once in a lifetime opportunity to upgrade your home. So even if you already have the thing, this might be a good chance to upgrade it to a nicer one. So for example, that pot that you bought freshman year of college, maybe you could replace that with three or four really high quality cookware pieces from a top brand that will last for years and years and years. A new TV is another great option. High quality knives is another perfect item to get an upgrade on, something you use every day. Maybe it's a full-size complete flatware set or matching dishes. If you ever have eight friends come over for dinner and you struggle to find enough forks and matching plates and wine glasses for everyone, uh uh-huh, that's what I mean. So this is a great opportunity to get a big set of matching stuff. Another one of my favorite upgrade categories is bedding and towels. I personally value really, really high quality bedding, pillows and towels because they are literally something that we use every single day. So don't be shy and don't skimp just because you wouldn't go out and buy yourself $3,000 worth of deluxe sheets and comforters and pillows and towels. That doesn't mean your guests won't. And these are items that again, you'll enjoy for years to come and that you're going to enjoy having every single day. And of course, your registry definitely doesn't stop in your kitchen and your bedroom. Here are a few more things from other areas of your home just to get a deep brainstorm started. Camping stuff is a big one for me and my family. Any kind of outdoor furniture, grill, umbrellas, planter boxes, gardening, outdoor tools, all of those would be great options on a registry. Shift gears from the home goods stores and take a walk through Home Depot or Lowe's or any other big uh, home store. You might be surprised by how many things around your house could use a refresh or an upgrade. Now, I'm not suggesting that one single guest would gift you a brand new refrigerator or a washer and dryer set. They might, in which case you have a very generous group of loved ones. But even listing gift cards to a home improvement store would certainly be a really easy, appropriate, and very useful gift request to add on to your registry. And that also allows people the gift card option. It allows people to choose exactly what is appropriate for their own budget. So they can gift you $25. They can gift you $2,500. It's completely up to them. Coming up after a quick break, we're going to cover some more on appropriate price points, talk about registering using cash funds, and lots more of my top wedding gift registry tips, including those items from my own registry that we literally never used. I'll be back in just a minute. Coordinating suit and tux looks for your fiance and wedding party can get pretty overwhelming. 
That's why Generation Tux makes it simple, fun, and convenient with online suit and tuxedo rentals that allow you to do everything online from the comfort of your own home. Generation Tux specializes in online suit and tuxedo rentals with high-quality men's formal wear rentals starting at just $99 and award-winning customer service. They offer over 25 styles of suits and tuxedos available in a variety of colors and hues. I love their easy online fitting option. With their patented e-tailor algorithm, they have a groomsman management system to make sure everyone is fitted and orders their looks. You can try Generation Tux for yourself by visiting generationtux.com. Build your head-to-toe looks, get free color swatches, a free home try-on, and manage your entire wedding party online. That's G-E-N-E-R-A-T-I-O-N-T-U-X dot com. Susan's Travel Services is so excited to partner with you to plan your honeymoon, destination wedding, or maybe even your bachelor or bachelorette party. Susan and her team have been planning dream vacations for 27 years, and they are truly the best in the business for start to finish planning services. Travel and new experiences are incredibly special to me, and Susan and her team have helped me plan some unforgettable vacations, including a bachelorette party in Cabo and a family anniversary celebration in Cancun. They meticulously researched the best all-inclusive options for us based on some very specific priorities and the professional assistance in choosing location, resort, activities, and transportation was absolutely priceless. From all-inclusive resorts in Mexico and the Caribbean, overwater bungalows in the Maldives, or that African safari that you've always dreamed of, save yourself hours of research and guesswork and let Susan and her team find you the best options for a once-in-a-lifetime vacation. Reach out to Susan and her team today by emailing info at susanstravelservices.com And be sure to let her know that I sent you and get $50 off your final booking or $200 off your destination wedding. Her email one more time is info at susanstravelservices.com. I'm all about helping you make your wedding celebration as personalized and unique as possible, and I can't think of a better place to shop for all those beautiful little details than Etsy. Whether you're looking for colorful wine bottle stopper favors for your bridal shower or a custom suit for your dog to wear down the aisle, Etsy is the perfect one-stop shopping experience. I shopped Etsy for my bridesmaids gifts and wedding accessories and to this day it's still the first place I go for one-of-a-kind custom gifts. Make your wedding celebration as personalized and unique as you with custom signs, invitations, favors, and more. Filter endless beautiful options by price point, color, free shipping, and style when you visit weddingplanningpodcast.co slash Etsy. That website again is weddingplanningpodcast.co slash E-T-S-Y. Okay, we're back and let's continue our conversation about your gift registry. And shifting gears, we're going to talk about some appropriate ways to structure your registry so that you are hitting a variety of price points. It's important as you structure your registry that you do have lots of different price points, high and low. So this is where things like kitchen tools, towels, pots and pans, knives, and pillows Those larger categories of things that we touched on before the break, those can all be broken down into $25, $50, or $100 items so that a guest has the option to give a smaller gift if that's what falls within their budget. This way, your cousin who might be finishing school and is really tight on cash can choose $25 worth of kitchen tools. They can gift you a $25 gift card for the store where you're registered or they could contribute to a larger cash fund gift. And we're gonna touch on those more in just a minute. And another important consideration is I love giving people at least one online option and also a physical store option. 
For example, you could use an online registry service in addition to registering at a physical store that someone can walk into. Some that come to mind, Macy's, Target, Bed Bath & Beyond, Walmart. I know we do so much shopping online these days, but this way those people uh, close to you who want to actually go into a store and walk out with a physical gift to wrap and give to you, they have that option. And having a list of those physical stores and actual physical items is also important for guests who may not feel comfortable giving cash or contributing to a larger cash fund. So having a selection of some physical gifts for them to choose from is just a nice way to keep your registry really well-rounded and make sure there's a little bit of something for everyone on there. And here we are at cash fund registries. So we've got the traditional housewares, the tr traditional things for the home, and now we move into this relatively new uh, realm of cash funds. I hear from you all the time that your home is established and maybe you can use an upgrade or two on some essential things, but you're literally stuck when it comes to what you should include on your gift registry. So think about, to get this started, think about what the two of you love to do together in your free time. And then Using that, I'll share with you some things that could go on your registry in the form of a cash fund. These can be things like memberships or subscriptions. So for example, a wine club membership, tennis or pickleball club membership, a yoga studio. You could have a cash fund set up for your honeymoon. You could have a cash fund set up to cover a new pet that you want to get. Seriously, like anything goes, your imagination is the limit. And then another category here for cash funds, wedding vendors could be included in a cash fund. So for example, if videography is on your wish list, but not necessarily within your budget, you could ask your guests to contribute towards your videography package. Now, of course, this is something that you would need to book and pay for well in advance of your actual wedding. So those funds that you collected would then be retroactively used to pay off the videographer or put back in your savings account, if that makes sense. I know cash funds aren't for everyone. I know there are different levels of comfort with asking your guests essentially to share money with you. Um, so do what feels comfortable to you. I'm definitely not suggesting that this is something you have to do if it's something that doesn't sound like it fits appropriately with you and your guest pool. So whatever you want goes. I'm just sharing a bunch of ideas here so that you know you have a ton of options. And of course, I have to mention not having a gift registry at all is definitely an option. Having your guests contribute to a cash fund that ends up going to a charity or ends up going to a local church, anything like that would be completely appropriate. Again, you have a million different options, just the sky is the limit and let your imagination go to work as you choose what feels best for your situation. And then I just have a couple of closing miscellaneous thoughts on the whole topic of gift registries before we wrap up for today. As you are building your registry list, I want to reiterate, really stop and ask yourself if this is something that you're actually going to use. If you don't need it or won't use it right now, then you probably won't after you're married. And here's where I'll share two specific things that John and I registered for and we never touched. Okay, these are kind of silly. Uh, one was a popcorn maker because we were definitely going to sit down together and pop our own popcorn while we watched movies after we got married which we never did, literally not even once. And then the other thing was a waffle iron because I thought it would be so fun to make homemade waffle batter and have brunch on Sundays and Saturday mornings. We just never used them. I'm not suggesting that you won't use them. Again, I'm just sharing some things that at the time sounded like an amazing idea and something we would 
totally enjoy and we never ended up touching them. They took up half of a cabinet for years and years and years before I donated them to someone who actually did want to use them and love them. Uh, anyway, just some food for thought. <laughs> and then touching on quality versus quantity, which I touched on very early in the show. Just because that wedding registry checklist you're looking at says you need 15 different size pots and pans to outfit your kitchen. Again, same idea. That doesn't mean that you're ever going to actually use 15 different size pots and pans. A professional chef might, but as you are just doing everyday cooking in your kitchen, probably not necessary. And then the same goes with a knife set. You don't need 30 different kinds of knives. Just because they exist and it's an option doesn't mean that they're going to be useful to you. There's probably a cheap set of pots and pans in every size and shape imaginable. If it were me personally, I would choose three to four really, really nice functional pots and pans from a really high quality brand that I know I'm going to use every single day versus having 15 different ones that I never use cluttering up the cabinets. And then to round out today's show and bring us full circle, I have a list of your top registry wish list items that I collected from you uh, in a poll out on Instagram. So I'm going to list these off. Lots of KitchenAid mixers. I have one. I use it occasionally, but I do love it. That is an amazing gift, especially because I think it's something that you wouldn't necessarily buy for yourself. So KitchenAid mixer, that is the perfect registry item. Family heirloom furniture. So really splurging on some furniture pieces that you intend to keep and have forever. Pottery barn bedding. That goes with our theme of really high quality luxury bedding, towels, things like that. Contributions to our honeymoon fund. There were a bunch of those. Super practical. I love that. A smart vacuum, those little vacuums that hover around on their own and keep your floor clean. That's incredibly useful. Someone has on there a bar cart. That is super fun great registry item. Expensive pans and cookware from Williams Sonoma that I would never splurge on for myself. And then some more honeymoon fund for our all-inclusive resort getaway to Cabo. A deluxe bedroom set including really nice linens and pillows. Love it. All right, that's just the start of it. There's much more and you can find a written version of everything we touched on in today's show by visiting our website weddingplanningpodcast.co slash registry. Thank you so much for being here today and we'll talk again next week. Same time, same place. Thank you so much for joining me this week on the Wedding Planning Podcast. I've been sharing my signature wedding planning advice on the podcast for eight years now, and for the first time ever, I've opened up my door to one-on-one -on -one wedding strategy calls. Whether you're looking for just one session to get your wedding plan started, or a series of ongoing support throughout your engagement, I'm here for you. Get the details and book your first call today when you visit wedpodcast.com. We'll talk soon.